Today is Thursday, the 20th of February, 2020. This is a video about Health One's chronic disease management functionality, which is available in the next version of Health One, 8.7.1.2619, or a number greater than 2619. This version of Health One will be distributed to all users in the coming weeks. To check which version of Health One you have, you can click from within Health One the Help menu and About, and that will tell you up here what version of Health One you have. Here I have a patient open, Deirdre Diabetes, who is greater than 75 years of age. She has an active medical card, and she has in her problem list diabetes type 2. So I'm going to register this patient using the Chronic Disease Management MediForm by clicking on the red icon and typing in CDM for Chronic Disease Management. If this is not immediately available or visible here in My Forms tab, try All Forms and you might find it in there. If it is in there, you should have this ticked the checkbox such that it becomes part of My Forms. Click OK and you will open the CDM MediForm. And the first thing that appears is a registration form because the chronic diseases for this patient haven't been registered within Health One locally yet. Health One has picked up the fact that the patient has diabetes type 2 and that it was diagnosed on the 25th of the 3rd, 2003. It gets this information from the basic medical information and problem list here, the diagnosis and the start date. As it happens, this patient also had coronary artery stenting and an end arterectomy. And this indicates to me that the patient has also got ischemic heart disease, even though ischemic heart disease isn't recorded in the basic medical I will therefore put this in and I will put a date, I can put a full date or I can put a month and a year or I can put just a year. Let's just say that I want to give this patient a new diagnosis here and now of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So I'll just tick it in here and put in say 1999 as the year it was diagnosed. I can now click OK. And all of these conditions will be registered locally within Health One uh, for CDM. Health One will now bring up a review form, CDM review form, and as you can see, it takes a few seconds for it to bring it up. Health One, as you can see on the left, has already put in the diagnosis of COPD and ischemic heart disease into the patient file. This is the chronic disease management review form. And that's, this will be the subject of most of the rest of this video. As you can see, it's his first review. He hasn't attended before. He has a CDM diagnosis of type 2 diabetes, COPD, and ischemic heart disease. And all of these have been registered within Health One. On the top of the form here, you will see the responsible doctor, the GMS number, and the Irish Medical Council number. This is an important point and I'm going to spend some time just talking about it. The responsible person for this patient is the person who uh, has responsibility for the medical card. Health One will send the patient's GMS number to the PCRS and the PCRS will send back the doctor GMS number to Health One. If that GMS number is in the user DB in Health One, then Health One will take the responsible's name there. If that number is not in the user DB, Health One will give you a drop down list so you can choose the doctor who has this GMS number. It is possible also that some practices will be giving the same GMS number to several users in the past. If that is the case, you'll have to fix it in the user DB. That one will bring up the first user here. You can also, if you so wish, register another disease by clicking on the diseases icon over here. So here you have the physical examination 
and physical examination diabetes, which is only there because the patient has had a diagnosis of diabetes, otherwise it wouldn't be there. And you can scroll down through the screen using the arrow here, all the way down to the bottom, or you can use the scroll bar to go down and up. Alternatively, you can use these icons on the left, physical examination, risk factors, bringing risk factors up here. You can see disease assessment is here, but if we click it over here, it just brings it to the top. Same with investigations, medication review. And as you can also see, these are all in red here, which means there are some mandatory fields that have not yet been filled in available. There's also a message down here to say that there are 37 fields required to be filled in. So let's fill them in. The first part is the physical examination, and I'm going to fill in these. So I filled in several of these, and the red exclamation mark, which marks them as mandatory, is taken away, is gone, because they're filled in. If I put in the blood pressure as 124 over 96, you will see that Health 1 will give you a hint there that he's got mild hypertension. He also has diabetes, as we know. Has he had an amputation? No. Has he had a retinal screening in the last 13 months? Yes. And he therefore hasn't been referred for retinal screening. You can see here now that the physical examination is in blue. That means that all the mandatory fields in the physical examination side have been filled in. And there are 21 fields left to be filled in. If I just click on risk factors, it brings my risk factors to the top. And I can fill these in. Brief intervention for his weight, his smoking status. This patient is a never smoker. His audit C score for alcohol. If you click on the button here, it will bring up the audit C, the health one audit C score form. So he drinks three times a week, and his audit C score down here is three. How many standard drinks does he have? He has three standard drinks each time. So his audit C score is now four. And he never has more than six standard drinks on a single occasion, so it remains at four. Because his audit C is four, uh, you have the ability or the, uh, you're allowed to fill in a full audit C, but you don't absolutely have to. So his audit C score is four. Physical activity in a typical week, how many days physical activity greater than 30 minutes do you do? Let's say one to four days. Therefore, you have another question. If it's four days or less, do you do 150 minutes moderate or 75 minutes vigorous exercise in these sessions? The answer to this is yes. As one will pick up the influenza vaccine and the pneumococcal vaccine. Just like the cycle of care mediform, if, you know, if an influenza vaccine has been given in the past 10 months, it would pick it up here. And if a pneumococcal vaccine has ever been given, it would pick it up. If you want to see his vaccine history, just click on the vaccine button there and you can look for yourself. So my risk factors are now all filled in and they're in blue, so I'm going to go to disease assessment. My cardiovascular risk score is in, is in fact the Q risk, so I click on the button here and bring up the Q risk form. That takes a couple of seconds to come up sometimes. And you can fill this in. He's a non-smoker, he's diabetes type 2, and has he had any other problems? You calculate the risk, and you say OK, and it'll just go into the CD, CBD score. This patient also has COPD, so we're asked the COPD dyspnea score questions. This patient has dyspnea when hurrying up or walking up a slight hill. Now we go to investigations, which is here. The disease assessment is finished. So let's click on investigations just to bring it up to the top. Has the patient ever had an ECG? I don't know. So I can look with my icon here. Is there any mention of an ECG in his file? He had one in 2003, uh, which is a long time ago, but he has had one. If he has had an ECG, it's asking him for the result, whether sinus rhythm or what. Has he ever had spirometry? Again, you can check it out by clicking on the icon to the left, and you'll see he never has had spirometry, so you say no to this one. 
As regards the laboratory investigations, this will be empty by default unless the patient has had his bloods done in the past three months. If he has them done, then they will be auto-populated. So in this case, the patient has ha hasn't had any bloods done and we're going to do them today. So I leave them empty for the moment. Thyroid function tests. Again, I can check his past thyroid function tests by clicking here. He had them done in 2017. So I can say yes or no to these. He also had liver function tests done. I'm now going to go down to medication review by clicking on this button or just scrolling down. And I can see, even though I'm clicking down here, that the investigations aren't finished yet. Has the patient had a medication review? And I'd say yes, I did the medication review today. And I can click here on the list of his repeat medications very easily. Has education been provided by the GP? Yes. Has he been referred to an education program? No. Has he a breed, uh, written care plan? He has declined. The care plan is not yet ready in Health 1. So now I've finished the form. I have nine fields remaining, which are all the blood fields, the blood results. So I won't submit, I won't be allowed. If I try to submit, it will say, there are still nine fields missing. Please complete before submitting. So I'll simply save this, wait for the blood results to come back, and make an appointment for the patient with the doctor to review the whole thing, including the blood results. If I want to check the blood results or do the bloods today, I should use this insert lab request form because we have a very nice little feature in this form now for the selection list. In the selection list, we have a little key there for chronic disease management, which will tick all the required blood results for the particular conditions that you have diagnosed. Because for blood count is in twice, I'll untick that. And I'll take the bloods, I click OK. I'll also say who they were done by. Let's say they were done by the nurse. Uh, and I click OK. I now wait for the bloods to come back. If a patient develops one of the chronic diseases in the interim between different uh, examinations, and you record it here in the problem list by right-clicking and add, let's say it is uh, atrial fibrillation, you should always use the Health One dictionaries for these chronic diseases, and you type in atrial fibrillation. This will automatically be part of your CDM then, and you have an ICPC and an ICD code for it. You should always put in the date it was diagnosed. Let's say it was diagnosed in 01 20, 01 uh, slash 2020. Uh, then that will be recorded in the basic medical information. And therefore, when you come to do the next, next review, it will bring you up a registration form. Also, if you wish, you can at any time click on HCR, Chronic Disease Management, and that will bring you up the registration form, which allows you to register either this or any other one of these diseases without having to do a new uh, review. For the moment, I'll cancel that. Next thing I want to show you is the dashboard the CDM dashboard. To get at that, you click on Analysis, Chronic Disease Management Dashboard. It's very similar to the Cycle of Care Dashboard, which is already there, or the SIGCERT Dashboard, which is already there. So click on the Chronic Disease Management Dashboard, and you will see a list of all the patients who have had a CDM review. And this screen is simply a way of filtering all these different patients by responsible or by for different periods of time, by patient name or whether they're submitted or not. So I repeat, click on analysis, chronic disease management dashboard. And here you get a list of all the patients that we have already seen for the CDM. The first patient is age 75 
and has atrial fibrillation, was seen by the nurse, was not yet submitted because we're waiting for the blood results. The patient down here has diabetes, is 89. The results are back and the CDM has been submitted to HealthLink. When the next lab results came down from HealthLink, we got back an acknowledgement which told us that uh, they got it and it was accepted. This is important so you have an idea of whether you're going to get paid for it or not. We also in this case did a CDM on a 59 year old person but we were unable to submit it and we wouldn't want to submit it because the patient is only 59. The point here being that if you wish you can use the CDM functionality for all your patients. Why confine it to just over 75s? But you can only submit the, at the moment those over 75. If you right click on any of these, you can submit it from here. You can check the GMS number online. You can open the chronic disease management form by clicking here and you get the form up, or this specific form. And it tells you here patients less than 75. There's no missing data. But because the patient is in 75, uh, we won't be able to submit it, but we can manage it uh, within Health One. Likewise, if you right click, you can open the patient file, or you can see some information regarding the uh, submission. So if it was rejected, you would click here and see why it was rejected. So that is. Uh, chronic disease management in Health One version 8.7.1.2619, which will be released shortly to all users. That's the end of this recording. Thank you.